Hey friends, it's Lauren Taylor. Welcome back to the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel. Today we're making a light up card featuring this adorable princess from the Simon Says Stamp set Once Upon a Time. I have the set and then coordinating dies. I'm also going to be using my mini slimline stitch dies from Popsicle Sticks and I have my Easy Light from Pear Blossom Press and of course the stamp set, um, the Pear Blossom Press stamp and die. So I'll go ahead and we're going to begin with coloring our princess. I'm going to try to keep it not too long here. I really want to get into how I assembled the card, but just in case you're interested in how I colored my princess, I wanted to walk you through that process as well. So I have my princess stamp. I'm going to do the rose as well as these little kind of sparkles. Now I know in the pictures it's a little hard to see where my images are lighting up, but I promise you'll see it at the end of this video. So I have some alcohol marker friendly cardstock and I'm adding my stamp so I can use some alcohol markers. I'm going to be using black ink to stamp my images. I prefer to use Sassy Club's Onyx black ink pad. It just works really well not only for alcohol markers but also for water coloring. So I'll go ahead and use my Misty to stamp so that way I can stamp more than once in case I don't do the greatest job stamping the first time. I really like my images to have a nice crisp line. So I'll use my Misty to help with that. So I'm going to stamp it actually twice but I'll only show you it once here and I'm using my little pressure tool to make sure my stamping looks nice. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and I'll show you my markers as I use them. I just got this pack of OO markers for Skin Colors, the portrait collection. So I've been experimenting with them as I know that they are the current rage marker to get. So I'm going to be using the ORs to color in her skin and hair. So I have my caps there. Um, if you have any questions about my coloring, just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. So I like to start with the darkest shade when coloring first, putting in a kind of the dark areas, the shadows, and then I move into the lighter colors to bring that color out and move it into the areas where I want it to look like light is shining on her face or her hair or clothes. I really have no major light source. I'm just assuming that the light source is in the front. So keeping um, the centers of things the lightest color. I'm doing the same with her hair. I'm starting with the darkest brown and I'm adding color where the shadow is. So, you know, closest to her face, kind of towards the ends of her hairs, anywhere where there's a fold or close to her dress. So I'll just go ahead and add all that in and then I'll bring in the medium tone and the lighter tone. I absolutely love these images from Simon Says Stamps. They are drawn by Alberto, who's an amazing colorist and just gives me lots of inspiration. I love looking at his posts and videos um, to see how he color, I guess posts, see how he colors. He has a lot of coloring guides that I like to save for future use. Um, I just really love his color combinations and I think his art is so pretty and I'm so excited that he has stamps with Simon Says Stamps so I can collect those as well. So here you can see I'm bringing in that mid-tone. She has a lot of pretty hair, so I'm doing my best to, you know, make sure that there's enough highlights, but also not take forever to color in her, her hair. So now I'm going in with the lightest color and really just trying to blend them all out. I've been really enjoying these Olo markers. I think that it's really great how the color families really blend well together, and it's very easy to know what colors go with what. I'm bringing in some of the other skin tone colors to add in some peachy cheeks. Now her dress is going to be gold, so I'm going in with the darkest color YR33. And these are now Ohuhu art markers, which I think I have all of the colors for these. So um, I like to you know, mix and match to find really good color combinations. Another reason why I like to leave coloring in my video. So if you have Ohuhu art markers as well and need some help with color combinations, I hope this will inspire you. So I'm using these two colors, so YR33 and Y2 to be the darker yellows of her dress and then I'll go in with lighter yellows to fill in the rest. So I'm starting with Y1 and just like I did with the skin and the hair, I'm adding the darker color to be the shadows of the image and then I will bring in a lighter color to completely fill it in. When I move on to the flowers, I'm just going to show how I colored in one flower because it's the same color combination. And I know that most of us picture 
a red rose for this particular fandom princess, but I was looking at images to color her dress in and the rose, and I just noticed that in the cartoon movie, it's a very pink rose. So I'm going to bring in pink colors when I get to that part. So I'm using some kind of more tealishy greens to color in the leaves. Um, I just wanted it to I thought it would just complement having a pink rose more. So now I'm bringing in RVs and Rs to color in my pink rose. And I'm going to use blue and pink to color in the glass container for the rose. So I'm starting with blue by just only kind of sticking to the edges. I want it to look like it's glass, like it's reflecting the light. So I'll use this light blue color and then I'll bring in a colorless blender to try to fade it out. And then in the movie, the rose is kind of lit up and very magical. So I'm going to bring in some pale pinks to fill in around the rose. So first I start with adding color by kind of tracing around the outside of the rose. And then I'm just going to add little dots so it looks like it's kind of lit up and magical. And I'll get a little bit darker with a couple colors, but adding less dots the more the darker it gets. And I use that same color combination for the little too sparkly um, diamonds. I'm going to grab the coordinating dies and use some repositionable tape to keep those dies in place while I run it through my die cut machine. If you don't have the dies, you can definitely use a scan and cut or fussy cut them out. I just like having them, um, for quick cutting. <laughs> I also die cut all of the different layers for my card. I'm using yellows and pinks to match my princess and the images. And for my first layer, it's a white card stock, but I wanted to do some stenciling. So I'm grabbing the stencil from scrapbook.com called Rose Bloom. It's a six by eight stencil. And I'm going to use some Pink Fresh Studio inks. I just got these. I love that they're coordinating in colors. Um, I just think it's so easy to create ombre looks when you have color families together. So I'm going to use three colors. I'm starting with the lightest one and I have the little mini ink pads, the cubes, and this is the rose garden um, combination of colors. So the first one is cherry blossom, a very pretty pale pink, and I'm just using a blending brush to add that first layer of color on the top part of the card. And then in the middle, I bring in the next color, which is peony and just you know, working that blend to blend them together. And then finally, the last color is begonia, and just, I really think it's so pretty, and it matches the roses that I colored on my images. Um, I'm very happy with how this turned out, and I love these inks together. So that will be the top layer of my card, and of course I wanna add some shine, so I'm gonna grab a mica spray. This is from the Halloween Set 1 collection from Ranger and Tim Holtz. And I'm just taking the kind of spray nozzle straw and using that to splatter on some of that gold um, color onto the background. I'll let that dry, so we'll move on to working on embossing on our hearts. I'm going to stamp the word press from the Pear Blossom Press stamp and die set so my card receiver will know that it's interactive and where to press to interact with the card. So I'm going to use this dark cardstock. It's kind of a shimmery cardstock. It's from Lawn Fawn and it has this really pretty texture and kind of shimmer to it. I used it for the scallop border die cut as well and I'm going to emboss in gold powder. So I'm using my rabbit hole designs tool to add my anti-static powder. I have a clear embossing ink and my press on the clear block. So I'm going to stamp that down and then I'm going to grab tweezers to hold my die cut in place while I add my gold embossing powder. Um, this particular one is from Ink on 3 but obviously use what you have and maybe try not to make a mess like I did. I use my tweezers just to dip it into my container of embossing powder and then I use my heat gun to melt that down. I'm also going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment as well. I know that I want to kind of layer everything together and get an idea of how I want to assemble the inside of my card. So having all of my pieces ready is just easiest for me. I'm going to stamp one of the sentiments from the Once Upon a Time stamp set. There is a coordinating die for the sentiment as well, which I just love. That's like my favorite thing ever is when a sentiment has a coordinating die. And I went ahead and just stamped it in some black ink since that's what I stamped my images in and used that coordinating die to cut it out. And that was on just white cardstock. 
So now we can move on to figuring out where I'm going to punch holes for my easy lights as well as where my sentiment lines up to or the press sentiment lines up for my card receiver to know where to press and it lines up with that push button. So I originally did all of these markings on the yellow card stock, but then I realized that I need to know where to punch the holes through my rows. So I already have the marking for my press on the yellow card stock, um, but now I'm working on where the LEDs need to go. So I'm just using a sharp poking tool and a piece of foam to go ahead and punch the three holes of where I want my LEDs to go. I was originally thinking that I needed to know where they go on the yellow card stock, but I'm actually going to tape the LEDs to the back of the bloom um, pattern that I created. So adding the LEDs to where they need to go on the yellow card stock was not really necessary. So now I've got my easy light. I have my battery already in it. Let's start attaching everything together for the inside or the guts of the card, as Amanda says. So I'm going to use double-sided adhesive to add on the back of my battery pack. And I have, again, a mark where I think the press will go on my yellow card stock. So I'll go ahead and get my battery pack added. So just peeling off the release paper and I'm making sure my button lines up with where I made the mark on my yellow card stock. Now the nice thing about having my press button sentiment on a small little die cut is that even if I didn't get it lined up exactly where I had planned, I can just move that little heart die cut around so it lines up perfectly with the button once my card is assembled. So now I have my LEDs to attach and I'm going to use some tape to keep the LEDs in place. So I'm making sure that the LED light, which is kind of the yellow looking piece of plastic on the end of the wires is in the inside of the hole and facing outward. So that LED is facing through the hole and I just do one at a time, make sure it's in place and then add that tape and there you can see the lights are shining through the holes. Here is when I realized that I needed to glue down my scallop background first, but luckily my bloom piece fit right through the center. So I'll go ahead and just use some liquid adhesive to add glue to the back of this pink scallop border, and I'll attach that to the yellow background. Once that's in place, I'm going to grab my world's best foam tape to attach my next layer. I want to make sure there's plenty of room for my battery pack and the Pear Blossom Press world's best foam tape is made specifically to be the perfect thickness. And what's great about it is that it's repositionable for about a half an hour. So if you place it down and you're like, that is not the right spot for it, <laughs> it's very easy to peel up and place in a better spot or the spot that you originally intended as usually what happens to me. Um, so I'm going to actually add the foam adhesive to the yellow cardstock so I can make sure I can fit it perfectly around my battery pack. And I'm also gonna use a piece to help hold my wires in place. Um, I'll go ahead and peel off all the release paper. You can see there my paper accidentally touched some of my foam adhesive and it was really easy to peel up. It didn't rip anything. So now I can place it down now that I have all my release paper peeled off and there's a great seal. And like I said, I could peel it off again here if I needed to, but in about a half an hour, it will be nice and secure and in place. Next, I'm gonna add my press button because that is important to make sure I have that in the correct location. So I went ahead and glued that down with liquid adhesive and it is lined up perfectly with my button. Now I'm gonna add in the rest of my elements. I glued down this little curvy banner, also from Popsicle Sticks, and I'm going to add my little diamonds where they cover the two holes of my LEDs. I didn't add a ton of glue, just in the points of my diamond, so that way I didn't get any glue over the hole of the LED. And then for my rose, I added some really thin foam tape to the top and bottom of the glass container, so that way the LED can be seen and glow through the rows. I use the same super thin foam tape to attach my princess and my sentiment as well. Now I did add some pretty gold splatter, but I love bling on a card. So I'm also gonna bring in some brilliant 
citrine rhinestones from Trinity Stamps. I'm just using a jewel picker and my liquid adhesive to glue those in place. I just did about five, kind of going across the card to match the gold splatter. Now I haven't glued this to a card base because I forgot to do it before attaching my jewels, but here's a final look at my pretty princess card. Let me go ahead and turn off all my lights. I did film during the day, so I know it's not super dark, but here you can really see those um, little diamonds and my rose glow in with my easy lights. I hope you enjoyed this process video. Let me know what you think of this adorable set and how I use the easy lights in the comments below. You can also find links to all of my supplies and make sure you subscribe, like this video, and watch more for even more inspiration. Bye!